it is so good to see you on the long weekend. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is the weekend of January 12th. Now, what I like to do on this show is just share my due diligence with you on some hot OTC and penny stocks. I'm a day trader and I trade penny stocks. And I find these hot penny stocks normally when I'm looking at the charts. I can see a lot of charts in a little amount of time. And at a glance, and I mean literally a glance, I can tell you if there's heat in a chart. A lot of it is very easy to see. A big tsunami across the bottom of the chart, we got volume coming in. A green hook approaching a red line, that's a breakout. And everybody recognizes a surge, a big long green streak on your page. Will you see any chart that has heat? That's one to take the time with. Go check out the filings and the press releases. See if you can find a catalyst. If you find a hot piece of news to match your hot chart, that's right, you've got yourself a hot penny stock. And these are the sort of stocks I like to share with you on a regular basis. Now, of course, that doesn't guarantee they're going to run, folks. We're just increasing our probabilities of finding stocks that are going to jump and bump and give us opportunities to take some gains. So, we are going to be taking a look at only one stock today, ticker LIFFF, Lift Power. Now, when you do your own due diligence and research behind me, make sure to pay attention to the details or you'll end up with a lot of wrong pages. I did. You got to get all three F's in there because there is a ticker for LIFF. You could be looking at the wrong chart and not realizing it. And when you go to their website, you got to put that hyphen in between LI and FT because Lift Power by itself is a website, but Lift hyphen FT Power is a completely different website. So pay attention to the details. So we have looked at Lyft before. I think it was back in early November. This is a Canadian lithium mining company. And I like lithium mining companies. Even though they're not making revenues yet, we've got to put our eyeballs on them because these are going to be big money makers in the future. Lithium is becoming a true commodity of our planet. We used to use lithium for smaller things like processing aluminum, creating uh, ceramic glazes, putting it in our cement to help the cement set quicker and harder. We even use it in the medical professions for people who have bipolar disorders. They take a little bit of lithium and it settles them down, it balances them. But now, with the EV market exploding, cars, power banks, we need a lot more. Tons and tons of it. Right now, we need approximately 600,000 tons they say by 2030, we're going to need five times that much, 3 million tons of lithium. Now, we get lithium from a lot of different places in the world, Australia, China, South America. Well, currently, we're not getting any from China. And Australia and South America, they're there, but that's a long ways away, and you got to pay extra to have it shipped to you. Well, we've got a lot of lithium here in North America. We have it in Canada, we have it in the US. Now there are two types of lithium that we can use. You have lithium carbonate and you have lithium hydroxide. Here in America, we're primarily using the lithium carbonate, which is the brine. Like over in Nevada, you have these high plain deserts at the foot of mountains. And all this lithium is leached into the ground, deep under the ground, and turned into a carbonate, like a salt. Well, to get that, what they do is they pump water down into the ground and that dissolves all that carbonate. Then they pump that water back up and they put it in these man-made pools, these ugly pools in the desert, and they let the sun do the rest of the work. It takes about 18 to 24 months and the sun will evaporate all that water, leaving the lithium residue behind. That's your lithium carbonate. This is primarily what is being used in batteries right now. It's good, there's no problems with it, but it could be better. If you take that lithium carbonate and put it through one more process, it becomes lithium hydroxide, which melts at a better temperature and makes better battery products. But it costs more to make, takes more time to make, and it is more expensive. But both are important. Well, lithium hydroxide can also be gotten out of pegmatites, big white rocks that look like quartz. And in the pegmatites is spondumene. <laughs> spondumene is what we get our lithium from. This is strictly hydroxide. 
there is no carbonate here and this makes better batteries and that's what this company has up in Canada and it looks to be one of the biggest in North America. So Lyft finished the day at $4.55. She's just about ready to leave Pennyville, folks, so we got to look at her. She has had some recent news since we've looked at her, which is why we are considering her before she leaves Pennyville. She was up about 3.5% on Friday, and she's on the best tier of the OTC, the QX. There's no better tier on the OTC, nothing more transparent, nothing more trustworthy. On the QX, you have to give us literally as much information as if you were on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange. We're getting financials that are audited. We're getting 8Ks. We're getting it all. So they're in a good place. And look at all these green ticks, folks. We got every single one we could be looking for. Verified profile and a transfer agent. Validated information. They have independent directors listed here telling us that they have aspirations of uplisting. The next tier up is onto the major exchange. They're also penny stock exempt. That's a huge bonus, folks. Penny stock exempt means regardless of their price, they are not a penny stock. This tells us they've been in business for three to five years, have had millions of dollars of revenues or assets for companies that aren't in business, and have kept up with their financials during that time. In other words, they've proven to us that they're reliable. So this company looks good. And then you've got your 12G3 2B certified here. This tells us that they are reporting on a higher tier. Everything looks great. So let's get some more information about this company. We could start here, but I would rather start over at the website. Nothing wrong with that description, but we're going to need more than just this. So let's run on over there. Bouncing on over to the company's website, we are here at li-ft.com. Don't forget that hyphen. You'll get a completely different site. So they tell us here that Lyft is a mineral exploration company engaged in acquiring, exploring, and developing lithium pegmatite projects located in Canada. The company's flagship project is the Yellowknife Lithium Project located way north in Canada, the Northwest Territories. The Yellowknife Lithium Project is comprised of mineral leases that cover the majority of the lithium pegmatites that make up the Yellowknife Pegmatite province. Now it just seems to me if you're going to go putting the word pegmatite in the name of your area, there must be a lot of pegmatites there. And there are. They tell us there are numerous spondamine bearing pegmatites with strike lengths of over a mile long and one third of a football field wide. So big you can easily see them from a satellite. See picture above. Now they tell us they also have four other projects, one up in the Northwest Territories and three way down south in Quebec, south compared to the Northwest Territories. Now these are all early stage exploration projects, so we're really not going to focus in on these, but you need to understand the relevant importance to these. What they're going to do is initially get this flagship project, Yellowknife, out there producing, making revenues then those revenues are going to help start up these other projects. And that's going to be perfect timing. As the need for lithium grows, as our EV market grows, people put in more power banks, we're going to need more and more lithium. So as the market starts opening up, they're going to be opening up more and more mines right behind each other so that they can supply more and more. So with that said, let's just focus in on the flagship project of the company, Yellowknife Lithium Project. Now they own 100% of this, scot free. They don't have to share anything with anybody. And they got this in November of 2022. Now the property was originally discovered and purchased back in the early 1940s by Superior Oil of Canada. And they did a little bit of exploration on it between 1940 and 1980, but that's about it. You got to remember, there was no big demand for lithium back then, and there certainly wasn't any good market price. So this was just an asset that they held on their books for decades. Well, in 1984, Mobile Oil came along and bought Superior Oil out, and they didn't want the lithium mine. So they sold it on the open market. It got bought and sold, bought and sold, and ultimately ended up in the hands of Lyft, who looks like they're going to be the ones who are going to actually mine it. Now, what I particularly like about this project is its location. 
Unlike a lot of mines in Canada, she's not out in the middle of the mountains with no way to get to her but a helicopter. I mean, seriously, there are a lot of mining companies before they can even start mining, they've got to invest time and money into building roads to their mines so they can get the equipment and personnel up there, not Yellowknife. <laughs> Yellowknife is smack dab in the middle of an existing community here, which has got everything going for it. We've got roads up here. We've got highways up here. We have got a barge right up against the company's project that crosses this lake to the railroads. They've got easy accessibility to get their lithium out once they've mined it. Plus, they don't have to drive all the way to the Northwest Territories, thank God. We've even got an airport here. So as I said, they are in a good locale where they are not going to have to make any changes to do business. They can get right to it. Now they tell us their portfolio of lithium pegamatites could produce the largest hard rock lithium resource in America. The Yellowknife project contains 13 different lithium pegamite systems. Actually, I think there are 14 pegamatite systems up there now. Now they have been doing a lot of exploration this last nine months. Since June of last year, they have drilled 34,000 meters of holes. Now we're not just talking one deep hole, lots of holes all added up. And if you're interested in those results, they've got an Excel document right here that's got everything you would want to know, but it's beyond me. So I'm gonna leave that due diligence up to you. So you've got an idea now of what's going on with the company. They've got this huge project up in the Northwest Territories, looks like it could be the biggest in North America, producing lithium oxide, the better lithium, the one that gets more money. And the company doesn't have to do anything before they go to work. They are right there in a community that has got everything. And behind this one, they have got four other projects that they are gonna be working on, getting them going behind this one as the world needs more and more lithium. Let's go take a look at some information about the stock now. So where does one go to get stock information? Well, personally, I just come right on back here to the otcmarkets.com website. Honestly, folks, this is where I do all of my initial research and due diligence on any stock, regardless if it's OTC or major exchange. And normally I find what I'm looking for here. If I don't, then I can go elsewhere. So taking a look at the relative volume for lift power, over the last 30 days, she's been doing about 7,600 shares. Not getting a lot of love, is she? And Friday, she fell some more, down to 7.3 thousand shares. Taking a look at the share structure, outstanding share count is about 41 million. The insiders, the management, they own about 1.1 million, leaving us all the rest of almost 40 million shares. Now I know that sounds like a big number, but in the big scheme of things, 40 million shares in the float is pretty decent actually. Taking a look at the financials for Lyft, well, you're gonna see they have nothing on the books annually and they got nothing on the books quarterly because they're not in operations yet, which is the sad tale for most of the lithium mining companies in North America right now. I have shared a whole bunch of lithium mining companies in America. Most of them have been in Nevada, but none of them have got the go ahead yet. Of all the lithium mining companies in America, only one, ticker ALB, is in operations. And they've been in operations for virtually 100 years. Now, it's not that the other companies aren't ready. They are ready. So what's the holdup? Arguments, debates. You've got civilians out there that are worried about the plants, the ground, insects, the water. You've got the government. There are lots of agencies each having say over these pieces of land. One agency says, yeah, they can go ahead and mine, but another one says, no, no, not yet. Well, until the agencies agree, you're not gonna get anything done. Until the courts don't see any problem, you're not gonna get anything done. And yet we need this lithium now. The market is exploding. Now, Canada is a minor friendly jurisdiction. They're getting a little more help than America, but they still have their own bureaucracy. This company is close to getting into operations, but they're just not there yet. Balance sheet for the company, cash and cash equivalents, what they got in the bank, about 13 million. Total assets for the company, 184 million. Whoa, look at those liabilities, less than 8 million. 
That means we've got some strong stockholder equity of $176 million. Now what I did is I took that $176 million and I divided it by those shares. This should give us a guesstimate price for what the stock should be based on equity. So I did that. I brought up the calculator, put in all the numbers, brought it up and voila, look how close we are there. Very close. Taking a look at the disclosures for the company, we don't have anything here. So let's just jump on over into that news. Now there really is a lot of news that has come out since we looked at it early November and it's all the same sort of news. It is their assays, their test results from their drillings. Now I've gone all the way back here to December 5th and you can see they're doing well. Keeping in mind that the grades they're looking for are 1.1, which is the floor, that's where value begins in lithium mining, up to 1.6, which they consider the gold standard. Anything above that is just tremendous. Well, we've got one here for 1.1, 1.2. Whoa, we got a 1.7 here, a 0.9, a 1.5, and another 1.5. So you can see they are finding lithium everywhere they're looking. It's not as strong everywhere, but in some places it's really strong. Now my one concern is when are they going to go operational? I don't know. I don't think they know. We haven't seen any insights or deadlines or dates telling us what they've got to do to get operational. So we are just standing in the lurches waiting. But again, this is one of those companies that is probably going to make buku bucks once they start running. We've already been told that they have got a mother load of lithium oxide up there. Could be the biggest in North America. Let's go take a look at this chart. So let's chart LIFFF on my free trading platform, TOS. That's short for Think or Swim. So we are taking a look at lift power. This is a six month, four hour view. And actually this is the entire chart for the company. They came on the market July 25th of 2023 at roughly $6.30. They hit a high here of $7.05 and then fell and bounced, creating this support resistance at $4.93, which you can see she is currently tagging. Once she fell under this support and resistance, she came down to a low of $3.38 in December. Bounced off of that, came up, and right there is our first token sign that she is going to be changing her trend. She's thinking about it. What I see here is a solid bar that goes right up to the 20-day SMA and then stops. She then spits a wick out on the other side of the 20-day SMA. Then she falls down no lower than where she started from. That is as sincere a token sign as I'm going to find looking at a chart. So I'm going to watch it now. This looks to me like she wants to break out without seeing anything else on the chart. So she starts going sideways and then walks across the 20-day SMA without any big deal. Walks across the 50-day SMA. And then we start to get some excitement into the picture. Some big bars start popping up. Then she crashes really hard with purpose. We've got a golden cross right there. This 20-day SMA crossed the 50-day SMA, which brings power to the price. She tagged that and then took off. Boom! Getting right up to our resistance at 490. She then came down to this 20-day SMA and broke our resistance with this bounce going to 495. She then fell back to the 20 and look at our 9-day SMA. It has turned up showing us it is ready to climb just like our 50-day SMA. And our oscillators, they're looking pretty good. You can see they've been climbing for a while and our PPO is getting a little extra incline to her right now, looking like she's ready to climb. We've got an imminent crossover on our MACD and our RSI has jumped from about 49 up to 57. Looking at our 20-day one-hour view, looking nice, right? We've got our low bubble in this corner of $3.70, high over our resistance at $4.95. She was underneath every single SMA here, got up on top of her nine, gave us one of those solid bars up to the 50-day SMA and then spit out a wick, came back down and whoop, went right across the 50-day SMA. Came down to the 20 with a big bounce. 
came back down under the 50 with another big bounce. She's back down under the 50, looking like she's coming up for another big bounce that's going to break out, possibly. Our oscillators say there is potentially hope on the horizon. We have a crossover happening on our PPO right now. Our MACD is just getting ready to cross the signal line, and our RSI is climbing, pushing from 48 to 51. Looking at our five day, five minute. All right, this one doesn't look as good. She was on top of her 50, came down to this $4.35, the crouch before the pounce, putting herself up over that resistance, coming back down under the 50 and bouncing back up on top. And right now, folks, she looks like she's ready to jump. She's on top of the 50, pushing up already. Oscillators say exactly that. Look. Our PPO has hit that pink line and has turned and is bouncing up. Our MACD has come down to the signal line and bounced. It too is bouncing up and our RSI is still climbing. I think it's ready to break out. How far it's going to go, I don't know, folks. But we're not looking at this primarily for the run. I am thinking about this for a long hold. I think all of these lithium mine companies are going to be great long holds. The price for lithium has doubled in over a year. Where do you think it's going to be this year? Folks, I would be putting LIFFF on my watch list for a while. But remember, she's about ready to leave Pennyville here. And she looks like she's about ready to break that resistance, which is going to put her outside of Pennyville. So I'd be putting LIFFF on my watch list for a while. I like lithium mining companies. I just wish they'd start to make some revenues. Remember, folks, I haven't done all the due diligence here. You know that. So please follow behind me doing your own due diligence. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.